Kevin Cole here with you down in the gathering space with Fontaine's DC, who are performing tonight with Idols, last show of the U.S. Uh, tour. And uh, sold out show tonight at, at Numo. Super excited about it. And it's great having you back in the studio here at KEXP. Yeah, it's good to be back. Haven't seen you since uh, Iceland. I, I know. Um, we'll catch up on that in, in a bit. But uh, do you mind playing a couple tracks? I'd love to.
stone dead It was a message I heard when the company said There is no warning and there is no future I like the way they treat me but I hate the way they use her Fontaine's DC live on the afternoon show, KEXP. So great having you here. Uh, you were here uh, first like a year ago uh, in two weeks on May 14th. That's correct, yeah, yeah. I feel like our feet have rarely touched our show since. Yeah, I, well, tonight's the last night of the US tour, but I think you're playing in Germany in two days. In Germany? Germany or Russia? <laughs> no, we're playing in France in like three days. We're not playing in Germany anymore. We have to cancel okay, our festival. Yeah. So, so do you get to go home for a, a minute? For um, a day? I'm actually in between houses at the moment. so uh, You don't have a home. I'm going to the streets for a night <laughs> and then heading off again. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's been intense. In in Iceland, uh, when we uh, when I last saw you in uh, in November, I guess it was. Mm. 
um, I believe you said the album was finished or almost finished, not mastered. Mm. Um, and uh, since then, it came out on April 12th, Dog Rail. And uh, are you happy with it? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do I, do I get to speak for everyone on the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is Green on the mic right now. Do you mind introducing everybody at some point, too? Yeah, sure. I'm, uh, I'm Green. I sing in a band called Fontaine's DC. <laughs> I'm 23 years old and I come from Dublin, Ireland. And uh, yeah, no, we're happy with the album. Um, uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's not really a case of uh, uh, really being happy with it. Uh, I think it's more of a case of kind of just accepting it for what it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're all going to go through different periods of, I suppose, uh, falling in and out and of, of, of love with it, like, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's just, that's the best way to look at these things, you know? Yeah, it's a great sounding album, and it and it is a great way to look at it as well. Like, uh, be happy with it, but know uh, you're constantly evolving. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, to what's next. So, um, yeah. So so back uh, back in November, Iceland Airwaves. That was a fantastic set. By the way, you're doing a, a handful of songs that you didn't play at either of the performances here on KEXP. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. I wanted to give you everything, you know. <laughs> Um, so, so thank you for that. So, uh, yeah, last day of the U.S. tour. Yeah, How are you holding up? Uh, pretty, pretty good actually. I mean, like, uh, there's there's plenty of sort of like, uh, I mean, there's there's plenty of nourishment, like you know, in terms of uh, um, having kind of healthy sort of like you know uh, conversations and good times and stuff like that. You know, um, especially when you, when you're on the road with a band like Idols, like you know. Yeah. And they, uh, they're they very much from the school of kind of like looking after, you know, your own mental health and, and the, the well-being of others as well. So it hasn't been the most arduous at all, really. Um, and it has been a lot of fun. The drives have been crazy. But, I mean, that's that's about it. Like, you know, I haven't really found myself able to complain for a lot of it. Um, a lot of gigs, though, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah how how has America been taking that in, the drives and the, <coughs> and the cities? I yeah. try not to hang around after shows to ask them, you know what I mean? But, like, they look happy, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's been a, a good tour. All the gigs have been very enjoyable and all very different. Um, but the drives are absolutely insane. Um, I think we had like one day to do Austin to Phoenix. And that was, so I've like never been in a car for so long, you know. Yeah, you, you have to get into the zen of it all. Mm, yeah. The zone of it all. <laughs> so, uh, so Dog Reel sounds like a love letter to uh, Ireland and specifically to your hometown of Dublin. And uh, throughout the album, though, you do lament uh, the effects of capitalism and gentrification and uh, and changes to the city. And um, can you speak for a bit on on the potential impact of these changes uh, and how they would affect the scene that you grew out of? Um, yeah. So I. I I suppose, you know, um, any sort of, uh, any, asp any, any kind of change, you know, change in any form uh, is going gonna, is gonna to kind of mess with your um, ability to comprehend in a, in a healthy manner um, the situation that you're in. You know, um, I, I suppose, you know, um, something like gentrification, when, when, it's, when it's, uh, it's kind of like the, the very sort of like um, stealing of a soul of, of, a, of, of a culture, you know, because, I mean, you can't really replace, it's not like we're modernizing Irish yeah. culture, it's like we're, we're kind of, you know, and, and, you know, the culture of anywhere that's being gentrified. It's not like that culture is becoming modernized and, uh, you know, in some sort of like healthy, um, you know, the, uh, the new kids on the block on the planet kind of buzz. Like it's more just a kind of like a, a general across the board um, Degression of uh, of of humanity as it's represented in our buildings and in our streets, and um, I think that uh, it it's it's just I mean it's just what a lot of people I think a lot of creative people in general um, sort of strive to to hang on to the things that are that are that are getting washed away you know what I mean um, whitewashed away, and uh, yeah so I, I think I think it's just kind of a, a, a way of coping with all these things is is to kind of write about them and document them before they before they're on their last legs, like, you know. Is that one of the ways uh, that you see of keeping the culture alive? I think it's our way of uh, keeping the, at least the memory of the culture alive, you know. It's kind of it's kind of like, um, you know, if somebody's, uh, it's quite a morbid thing to say, but if somebody's, uh, on, you know, experiencing their last few hours in a hospital bed, you tend to spend as much time beside them as possible. And um, I think, you know, I think, I think people are doing that now uh, in the face of gentrification. Yeah, that's a good analogy, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll give birth somewhere else or be sprouted somewhere else. Hopefully, yeah. Um, 
the album is steeped in literary uh, culture and references, and uh, you've cited poets like uh, William Butler Yeats and Patrick Kavanaugh as, as influences uh, in the past. And I, and I know you, <laughs> you guys initially bonded, right, in university over poetry? Yeah, I think it was, um, it was a sort of, I mean, I mean, it was very much an extracurricular activity for us, like, you know what I mean? And, and we kind of did it when we, weren't, uh, when we weren't attending classes and stuff like that, you know? Um, when you were attending the pub. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, you know being, being kind of rock stars and stuff like that, we, we skipped classes, you know what I mean? And uh, so uh, we, uh, I, th- I, think, I think it was just um, a nice way for us to kind of uh, genuinely express the aspects of ourselves that we didn't feel were being facilitated or, or um, nurtured um, elsewhere, you know? And uh, all of us were highly sensitive to each other's needs in, in that regard. And... Uh, so I think I think uh, poetry was kind of just I mean half the time it was just an excuse to talk to each other about how we how we kind of like uh, felt about you know you know very general issues like you know um, you know philosophy and stuff like that but I mean it was a great meeting point for all that kind of stuff and it also gave us something to to be um, com- competitive about um, w- without being too kind of egotistical about it because at the end of the day we were expressing ourselves you know yeah uh, that to me just sounds like a really super cool like wonderful thing to do well you're always welcome <laughs> no, i'd love to and and uh so so this this was even happening before you guys just started decided to start a band um it kind of happened you know alongside it uh, the two things didn't really touch at the start i don't think i think um whenever we started playing together we were just kind of wanting to be in a punk band or like we wanted to play songs like uh buddy holly and the beatles but like play it with aggression which is I've kind of found is the idea that I think everyone probably has. Um, and then it was only later that the two worlds kind of met when Carlos Carlos joined the band. And um, after that, we started taking it a lot more seriously. In, in those sessions when you were uh, working on lyrics and poems and the sharing, that kind of stuff, did the lyrics to the songs evolve kind of collaboratively? Um, mo- most of the lyrics in this album are, are my work. Yeah. But... Uh, I, I wouldn't have had the impetus to sort of get up and write them um, if I hadn't known these lads and what they were writing, you know, themselves and what they're bringing to the table. Um, uh, th- there, there are a few lines like um, uh, that tune, Roy's tune. Um, Roy is actually a nickname we had for Curly over there because he used to wear corduroys. And um, so we just called him Roy and then Roy's tune was the tune that he brought to the table. So he wrote one verse for that and then I had to finish the song, which is a bit of a bit of a strange thing to kind of pick up where someone else someone else leaves off, but um, uh, it was actually really really nice, you know, because it was it was a genuinely collaborative experience, you know. Yeah, I uh, should mention that last set you heard Sha Sha Sha, Roy's tune, and the Lots, uh, all on the uh, debut album Dog Reel, which uh, the title itself is is an homage to literature. Uh, Dog Reel, a form of working class Irish poetry. I don't think a lot of like uh, folks in the U.S. would know what that is. Do you mind uh, just talking about it for a sec. Do you want to explain it, Diego? Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, just in the, early, like in the Dubliners lyrics, there's a lot of uh, references to what was going on in the time and uh, the real lives of the people who lived in Dublin and in, th- in that era. And it was poetry written by them to discuss what was going on. And uh, we just really connected with that because it, it felt like it was people using poetry to talk about their lives and what was it they, was, they were experiencing as opposed to like poetry as this high-minded, uh, almost classist form that it has come to be perceived as today where it's like very institutional, very institutional and uh, very much a university kind of thing. So uh, it really brought out a lot of the romance that we were discovering ourselves through meeting up in pubs and writing poems together to discover this idea of doggerel and I mean, kind of the idea of uh, taking poetry back from these people and using it to your own devices is kind of like the idea of rock and roll as well, of taking music back from the classical heads and just expressing yourself. And so it just f- like fit as a name really well then af- when you bring it all together, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, merging the two uh, and continuing a, a literary tradition but making it accessible through maybe the style of the writing but also the music itself. Sure. More punk rock. Although you guys are more, I don't know, raw rock. You've got a lot of musical dimensions. Thanks very much. That, so, as, as do you. <laughs> Thanks. When, when, when things get sort of, uh, I don't know, categorized like, oh, new punk rock. I mean, 
it always seems like a bit of a disservice to me. It's not taking the music as a whole, right? Uh, the sensitivity to the writing, like you've got lyric lyrically and melodically incredible sensitivities, and just it's just played in a yeah. really raw, beautiful way. I think I think uh, w one of the one of the kind of uh, great problems that, that faces people who um, are in the industry, w w you know, uh, within which they have to express themselves, um, is is uh, is kind of. Um, is learning to ignore entirely uh, any, anyone else's opinion, you know, like a sp kind of especially uh, complimentary opinions, you know, because um, the 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 luxury with being insulted is that um, you know instinctively that you're not to take that on board because that would affect in a negative way what you're doing. Um, but the same thing can be said for compliments, um, but they kind of uh, they come in sheep's clothing, like you know what I mean? They, yeah. they and they they invite you to sort of like. To, to give uh, your sense of self-esteem to someone else, you know, because uh, as, as, as soon as you sort of like start relying upon compliments, then, then you are giving away your own sort of, uh, your own, uh, I can't think of the word, but you, you should be the crux of your own opinion, you know. Yeah, well, you're suddenly judging your own value on others' opinions, not yeah. your own. Yeah, exactly. Which can be really dangerous. Yeah, so, so the whole idea of uh, being labeled and stuff like that is, is kind of a clandestine form of the same thing. It's Fontaine's DC live on the afternoon show here, uh, KEXP. Tonight, the last night of the U.S. tour um, with Idols, sold out show at Numo's. I know you're going to be back in the fall or late summer. In fact, uh, you're going to be at the Thing Festival. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, yeah, in in, uh, in mid or end of August, pretty much. Looking forward to that. Uh, is it just kind of pedal to the floor right now, like nonstop? Do you have time to write? Do you? Uh, we've, we've, uh, I mean, we, we always find time to write, you know, um, in some respect, but, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of our writing is, is done just sort of in sound checks and stuff like that, but we, we are still, you know, in a sense, we are still garnering, uh, inspiration, um, all the time, you know, yeah. um, and it can be challenging sometimes when, when, you know, uh, your whole world is the inside of a van yeah. to a bar, to the inside of a van to a bar. Yeah. The bar, by the way, which I'm referencing is the bar that we're playing at, I'm not just talking yeah. about driving yeah. around to different bars. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, as long as we have each other and as long as we um, have books in the car and uh, music, you know, um, that we're still excited about, then I don't think we'll really struggle because we just, uh, we've always had to write anyway, out of necessity. Yeah. Have you been uh, writing and working any new new songs into the show? We have, yeah, we have. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you much more than that, <laughs> but yeah, we have. I can't wait to experience them tonight at Numo's, Fontaine's DC, along with Idols. Uh, how about a couple more songs? Sure, yeah. What are we playing next? Dublin, eh? Awesome. <laughs> I 
and it all makes sour So watch my lover wrap her arms around the flag of power Hurry now, you will So now you is to love you and I love you even still But we'll never truly be We trip along disaster in the whirlwind of the free All together now So I was down the bottom half of some old bar in China town Shoes have brought the rain and soaked the space for looking down It all makes sour So watch my lover wrap her arms around the flag of power Hurry now, you will So now you is to love you and I love you even still Ah, but we'll never truly be We trip along disaster in the whirlwind of the free All together now Too real if you did. Uh. <laughs> that was bad. Fontaine's DC live on KXP. I'm about to make a lot of money 
Fontaine's DC live on the afternoon show here on KEXP. Sounded so great. Thank you so much. Two songs there Thank from new album, Two Real Dublin City Sky. Dog Grill is the uh, is the debut album, and man, sounded so good. Thanks for having us, man. You bet, and thanks for all that you've done. Uh, three performances now on on KEXP. We uh, we absolutely love you. So thank you. Best of luck. Have fun tonight uh, with Idols at uh, at Numo's sold out show. It's going to be great. Yeah, gr- and a uh, great way to end the tour, and I'm glad you're ending it here in Seattle for us. Oh, so I'll see you in November, I suppose, will you? I hope so. We'll not see you tonight, no? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you're going to be there? Uh, absolutely, tonight, well, and, then, uh, and then come by tomorrow. You're going to be hanging out. Idols are going to play the gathering space. Uh, we don't have anything to do tomorrow, do we? No. Tomorrow during the day. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, Saturday yeah. morning. Cool, so uh, I'll see you tonight, see you tomorrow, and uh, see you in November. Sam, Kevin. Uh, yeah, thanks again. And a uh, huge thanks to uh, the KXP audio video team, uh, Kevin Suggs on sound, Matt O on the board, Kelsey uh, Matilde for helping out. And thanks to all the KXP donors who make in studios like this one with Fontaine's DC possible. It's KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.